Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between runout and position and focus on the applications. When would you use position? When would you use runout based on the functional need? Now, this is actually an excerpt from a Unit 13, my Geotile Online Fundamentals program, which I have a link for in the description below. So in this simplified example, I have two shafts, a larger diameter and a smaller diameter that have to be centered on each other. So we need to select one of them as the datum feature, which one is the leader. And let's say it fits into the main bearing over on this side, we're going to call that A. That will create a datum axis by using the smallest circumscribed cylinder on that imperfect part. So let's start with the first example, runout. Now remember, this is a comparison between them. You wouldn't have both of them. But let's do runout here. Give it a size tolerance, plus or minus 0.2, and a runout of 0.1. Now runout is a surface control. So you get the entire feature surface has to lie within two coaxial cylinders. So the separation between these two cylinders is the 0.1. So notice when that surface lies within that tolerance zone, that controls the centering of it, and it controls the form of it at the same time. Because if the surface has to lie within the tolerance zone, you're also controlling how out of round and how out of straight it is as well. Now position is just slightly different. That's controlling the axis instead. The axis has to lie within a cylindrical tower zone of 0.3. So that tower zone is right on the datum axis, and that controls how much that axis could be tip tilted or how off centered it could be. Now, how do we find the axis of that? Remember, it's using the unrelated actual mating envelope. So our funky looking shaft right here could still have perfect position because all you're going to do is wrap a cylinder around the highest points. Position doesn't care about the form, position just says the axis of the high points has to be in the right place. So that's really the only difference between those two. Position is controlling the axis of the unrelated actual mating envelope, the axis of the high points, versus runout, which is controlling the surface. If you want to talk about the four possible variations you could have, remember size, form, the shape of it, the orientation, tip tilt, and then the location, which is the coaxial centering of this piece. So with a good old position tolerance, you first put a size tolerance on there, control size and form. And then position will loop in to control the orientation and location to that datum. Now, runout is very similar, remember. You put a size tolerance also, that controls your size and form. But often with runout, your size tolerance is quite large, which means your form is quite large too. So you loop in a profile tolerance to further refine that form. So really, runout does everything that position does. It also kicks in an extra form control. That's the only difference. Runout is position plus an extra form. And you've seen that maybe in my other videos there where I say a position plus a cylindricity is really what total runout is controlling. So that's the big question there is do you need that extra form control or are you good with size talents taking care of that? So let's talk about that when we look at these next applications. And these same pictures and descriptions can be found in the Geotile Pro book on page 13.3 and also in 13.6. You can find a link to that also in the description below. So let's look at this coaxial gear application. We have two gears here, a gray gear and a green gear that have to mesh up with each other. So they take this orange shaft and they press the green gear onto the larger diameter. Then the smaller diameter is going to fit into a bearing which is in the housing here. So the part is going to be rotating and hopefully properly meshing up here. So first thing we have to decide is our datum feature. What should we select as datum feature A for this part? We really have two choices. We want to select the larger diameter as our datum feature, control where the smaller one is, or do you want to get on the smaller one and control where the larger one is? Which one is your leader? Which one is your follower? So is the gear going to determine where the housing is going to be? Or does the housing determine where the gear is going to be? And I would think most people think the bearing, the housing is our main leader, and that's where I'm going to select as datum feature A. So that'll create a nice axis that we're going to call zero, that we're going to control the other diameter too. Now I did put a tight size talents on here. This is millimeters. So that's going to be 10 microns. That's about 4 ten thousandths of an inch, if you're an inch person there. So really tight size there. And that's because you need that fit for the press fit onto the main gear. So now, to get it centered, we have two options. Position or runout. Now remember, what's the difference between position and runout? Form. Do you need an extra form with your coaxial control? If you say yes, you want run out. If you say no, you want position. Now always look to your size tolerance. Remember, size controls form. Whenever you put a size tolerance on something, you're also controlling the shape of that feature. So the question is, do you need a form control better than 10 microns? I think we got form on lock here. <laughs> so that's why all we need is a position tolerance. 
position will just keep it coaxial, keep the axis of this one coaxial with the axis of our datum. And if you think even if this thing was a little out of round, maybe it was a little bit misshapen, how is that going to go onto the mating part? The mating piece is going to press fit right on the highest points, and all we cared about was the axis anyway. The gear meshing is really completely separate from the fit up. And I hope you see that. There's two tolerances here, a really tight size tolerance for the fit, and then you have a separate coaxial control that controls how centered it has to be, which affects the gear mesh. And gear mesh, I mean, they got a little bit of flexibility there. They can be in and out and still work properly. So that's why I have 50 microns on the coaxiality, but a really tight size tolerance to control size and form for the fit. Run out would be total overkill here. Don't need that extra form control. Really wouldn't do much anyway. So let's look at another example here. We have two pulleys that are fixed in place. These are the gray ones here. They have to put a belt over the top of the pulleys. Now because of the fixed location, there's going to be some slack in the belt. So they have this idler wheel, just a belt tensioner, that can be adjusted in and out to put tension on the belt so it doesn't flutter and bounce around. Look how the part mounts. Mounts into a bearing down in here. And then the larger diameter, you'll have the belt riding on that surface. So what would you select as your datum feature here? Would you pick the bearing where it mounts or the really important surface where the belt rides? Well, I think I'd go with the bearing again. Now, I tried to draw you off track there when I said the really important surface, because people think, oh, the really important thing is the datum feature. Not necessarily. It's how does it mount, how does it fit. That's the datum feature. The important thing might just have a tight tolerance on it. Now, one thing that was not important, though, is the size. The size was not important because the thing can be adjusted up and down to compensate for size. If you had a big wheel, just adjust it in a little more. If you have a small wheel, adjust it in a little less. No big deal with the size. So that's why I give it plus or minus half a millimeter. Don't really care about the size. But we do want it to be coaxial because if it's off center, it's going to wobble, 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 and it's going to make our belt bounce and flutter. So if our goal is to make that belt run true and not flutter and bounce around, what symbols do we want? Position or run out? I'll remember the only difference between these is form. Do you need an extra form control with your coaxiality? And I always look to the size first. Did the size control the form very well? Not really. I mean, with such a large size tolerance, you could get a shaft that's oval. An oval shaft where this could be as big as 21 and this could be as small as 20, you could get a lot of lobing and problems there. So I think we do want that extra form control here. That's why I added a runout. Runout is a surface control. You have to point to the surface here. So you have a large size tolerance, plus or minus half a millimeter. I don't care about that. What I care about is how that surface runs relative to my axis. I want it to run true. I want to control form, orientation, and location. And that's perfect for a runout. So remember those four controls, size, form, orientation, and location? Well, we got a big plus or minus to cover the size. We don't really care about that. And then we'll have runout step in and control all the other stuff within a tight number. And all of that stuff will affect the belt flutter. I couldn't come up with a better word than flutter or bounce around or movement on the belt as it rotates. But that's, I think, a perfect place for our run out. So I hope you see these difference between those applications. Position, you already had a tight size tolerance for a fit, something that fits on the high points and mounts. You've got a tight size tolerance, then you position it. This is more like a pulley or something that has to ride on the surface. And that surface control run out might be a better application here. Well, hopefully you found this video helpful. Well, if you like this video, look at Unit 13. It's all dedicated to round turning shafts. So run out, position, profile, concentricity, and the differences between those. Those can be found on our Geotal Online Fundamentals Program, shown in the link below in the description. Thanks everyone for the likes and subscribes.